So guys, I've got a hell of a yarn for you. So see this picture on my wall above my bed head? I bought this about 10 months ago off a friend of mine. Well, yesterday I had a phone call and that phone call ended up being the best Easter present anybody could ever ask for. So yesterday my mate rang me up, Benny. They call him Drone Way on social media. You might know him. He does drone pictures all across Australia and then sells them online. And I bought that picture off him about 10 months ago. Well, yesterday, he rang me up and we're having a yarn. And I said, oh, we're talking about pictures and as we do usual stuff. And I said, actually, where's that picture taken, bro? I said, that, you know, that picture that I bought off you and I told him, well, where actually is the location? And it just so happens that that was taken at Lake Bonnie in South Australia. So, I, when I chose that picture, I could have chose probably 50 to 100 different pictures. There was some really nice ones, but that one spoke to me. I don't know why, that was the one I locked in. I actually shown that picture to a couple of mates before I grabbed it and the other ones I could have chose from. And they were like, nah, not that one, not that one. There was some actually like nicer scenery, but I ended up choosing that one. <laughs> it's crazy. So I'm a big believer everything happens for a reason. And so I ended up getting Bonnie when I first got out of prison. I got with a straight girl, we got in a relationship, she couldn't have kids. And um, my brother's mate had some beautiful dogs, and they were having some pups, so I ended up grabbing Bonnie. And, you know, we raised her up in the home and for about 12 months. We lived in a healthy little family environment. And um, I don't know how many people tuning in right now know my story, but, um, you know, I ended up spiraling out of control. You know, I had some real demons. I um, had some real mental health issues going on from that old life. And, so I ended up trying to unlive myself, and um, it didn't work. And when it didn't work, I remember the first thing that came to mind was Bonnie was there. And that's how sick in the mind I was at that time, you know. Um, I didn't even realize my dog was there. I was, I was so much in the tunnel vision of getting this mission successful, thank fuck it wasn't, that when I fell down and it didn't happen, I, um, I looked at Bonnie and I thought, fuck man, I can't believe I nearly done that in front of you. And I remember telling her, I'm so sorry, I'll never leave you again, I'm sorry, because I was about to leave this world in front of my dog. Everything happens for a reason, it didn't go down the way I expected it to, thank fuck, and I remember thinking in my head, I'll never lash you again. So anyway, the relationship spiraled out of control, I started consuming heaps of substances, rid myself right off. I remember when I was walking out the door and I was planning on never coming back. You know, I thought, I'm walking out this door and I'm never looking back. And, you know, it was a big argument and that. And I remember the girl I was with at the time turned around and said, you're leaving the dog, aren't ya? And I looked at her like, you're tripping, mate. Like, this dog's coming with me. She's my mate. We're soulmates, you know? And we took off. Well, for the next four years, I rid myself on drug, off drug, oh, rid myself off on drugs. I become a shell of a man, I was washed up, I was homeless, I was depressed, and Bonnie just sat by me the whole time. You can't find loyalty like that anywhere in this world. Like the world I've lived, the life I've lived, there was loyalty come and go. It was a word that was just thrown around. That dog showed me loyalty like no other. Like it was deep, you know? On the, on the worst days, on my... You know, I was fucking, it was an ugly situation for a long time there. And she would just be happy to sit by, knee, by me, you know, just next to me and that was it. So, you know, I'd, I'd hate to think where I would be now if it wasn't for Bonnie. Because in all that chaos, I still had to be responsible for her. And I promised I wouldn't lash her. And she definitely wasn't going to lash me. So, you know, if I went on that massive drug fuel bender without Bonnie, I didn't even know if I'd be here. Because every morning I'd wake up and it was another shit day and I had to go score. I looked at her and she gave me that little bit of light. So anyway, let's go around where I'm going with this. So I end up getting my shit together, as you know, guys. Me and Bonnie go on our little social media journey and we push our message and that. And that dog has taught me to love, you know? Like, she's like my therapy dog. Like, you have to feel to heal. You know what I mean? And so, being responsible for Bonnie and um, and caring for her, I've never had to be responsible for anybody. 
you know, let alone myself. But um, that's the way, that's why I am the way I am with Bonnie. Because everybody sees, you know, so, so loving and caring. It's because I'm making up for, you know, the times where I wasn't. And she's, I owe her that. She's so loyal, like, it's crazy, you know. And so, like, even with Russ Parson, you know what I mean? Russ Parson, that. And, um, you know, it, it just puts life in perspective. And I know that, you know, if I pass before her or she passes before me, that's no big deal because we are soulmates. We are connected. It's meant to be. And, like, I'll see her again 100%. We are meant to be by each other's side for eternity. It's a true story. So, yeah, the bond. You know, for all the parents out there, I'm sure you understand what it's like to have unconditional love and care for something more than you care for yourself. Because, um, you know, Bonnie's my child, man. True story. So there's the yarn. Crazy fucking yarn because that picture, you know, for it to be named Lake Bonnie, like, what's the chances? But um, that was a really cool Easter present for me, man. True story.